Pastor Hudson, delighted to be with you today. And today I'm going to give you the remaining five things you must learn to handle in life and grab a hold of in order to be a success. Number six, follow divine purpose. Let God manifest your destiny to you. I recently heard a gentleman say that people come up to him and say, the Lord told me you was going to have a word for me. And the minister looked back at them and said, well, here's the word of the Lord for you. You need to go and pray and ask God to speak to you himself because I'm not the Lord and God can give you a word and can help you with divine purpose himself. Your purpose must be greater than your circumstances. Remember that life does not agree with everything you're going to do for God. And people will not always think it's wonderful that you've decided to separate yourself from this world and live for God. So remember your purpose, living for God, being a soul winner, uh, going to heaven and being ready when Jesus comes will all be greater than any circumstance that you have or may come across in your walk with God. Now, then also if you lose your purpose, go back to the beginning, go back to where you started, go back to where you left off and then pick it up and follow that purpose again and do the will of God. And let me tell you the final thing about following a divine purpose. If you do not follow a divine purpose, you will backslide. If you do not follow a divine purpose, you will lose out with God. A divine purpose will keep you connected and keep you living for God, even when circumstances turn against you. Number seven, you must have a strong spiritual desire. Don't let setbacks or disappointments kill your strong spiritual desire. This is not an ego. This is not an ego. This is a strong spiritual desire to do the work of the Lord. And an ego really is no problem to God as long as that ego is submitted to God. And if your walk with God is to be sure, then your desire to complete this divine or the spiritual purpose must be stronger than the blessings. Because sometimes the blessings, people accept the blessings and they think, well, I've reached and everything is fine and I have reached a complete fulfillment of that. That's not always true. God, the Bible says, daily loadeth us with blessings and benefits. So don't allow the blessings that come to rob you or to cause you to fall short of where you want to be in living for God and seeing your spiritual desire fulfilled. Let your strong desire for spiritual power cause your spirit to stir within you. Number eight is a little more difficult. How Have well-defined goals. How far can you see? Can you see past where you're sitting now? And if you don't know where you're going, you will never know when you arrive, but you're sure to arrive somewhere. Blessed are those who expect nothing, someone said, because they shall not be disappointed. And if you don't know what you want to achieve, the shames of, of your life will not be that you didn't aim, but that you just aim too low and you hit. Number nine, be willing to let go of things holding you from growth, trusting the Spirit of God to lead you. You must have the serenity prayer. Believe that, pray it, and understand and wait for God to give you the courage to change what you can and accept what you can. All things, though, my mother said that the only thing constant in this world was actually change. And so if I knew that and know that change is coming, then um, it's a little more difficult. But if you can understand the change is for the better, it's for you to continue to walk with God. And sometimes change will bring a deeper level of God. And as you go, change will cause you to have to find a greater dimension of learning uh, how to live for God. If you cannot... Sure, change means growth and growth hurts, but I don't want to be a dwarf Christian all my life. If it hurts to grow, let me grow, but don't be dwarfed. Don't live with the, I could have, I should have, or I would have. Say, I did, I wanted to, and I have achieved. If you can't trust God with the little things, how can you trust him with the big things of life? And it's the same thing. If you want God to trust you with big responsibility, then you have to learn to handle, handle the small. And number 10... Remove all the wedges from your life. Remember Jacob's wife. The thing that God was in her tent, it was under her bed. Remember this. Um, anything that hinders you in your walk with God, you need to remove it. It's a wedge. It can drive a wedge. It can cause distance between you and God. And that's what wedges do. So you understand that if there's something under your tent or something under the floor or underneath your bed that it disagrees with the walk with God that he has for you, then it's important that you get rid of that 
and put your focus on living for God. You need to understand, like they did, uh, everything that was under Rachel's tent and everything in the floor. The Bible says that they placed it at the oak in Shechem and they left it there. So when you find something that's a wedge in your life, take it to the cross and leave it at the cross and go on and live your life knowing that God's going to be with you. And then, finally, I would like to leave you with one verse, one scripture from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing we are also so passed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied in your mind and faint in your minds. Remember this, the same temptations that you face, Jesus faced. The same trials that you face, Jesus faced. And he was victorious over them because of the word of God. And now he has a testimony and you can have that same testimony. The Bible says that we, they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Keep living for God. He's given you a testimony, and somebody one day is going to need your testimony of how you were able to live for God in the face of every adversity. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I'm praying today for somebody who may be thinking of quitting. I pray for somebody today who's been struggling for quite some time with a battle and with the idea of quitting and giving up. I pray today, Lord Jesus, that your hand will be upon them. They realize, God, they can rest, but they must not quit. And they must, again, submit themselves to you, to your plan and your purpose for their life, God. Because if they will not quit, the Apostle Paul said there was laid up for him a crown of righteousness. But not only for him, but for all those who would wait and look for your coming and your appearing. And I thank you for what you're doing for them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day in Christ. And run the race that is before you, knowing that there is a prize to obtain.